Hi you guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel, Smallotics channel. I'm April Whitney, you guys know me. This is a space where we talk about everything petite women's health, fitness, nutrition, mindset, all of the good stuff. So I'm really excited to be live with you guys today. We're doing a Q&A. So if you join us live, if you're able to hop on, feel free to just ask me any questions you have. If you've had questions based on any of the videos that I posted in the last couple months, feel free to ask. Um, we cover all the topics, as you guys know. And then I also took questions ahead of time and I'll start with those. Um, so yeah, feel free to say hi if you're here on the chat. Love to hang out with you guys the next like 20, 30 minutes and just chat about all the stuff, all the things interesting in the fitness and nutrition realm um, for short girls. So shall we get started? <laughs> I don't know why I'm so thirsty today. I'm also still in my pajamas, arguably. So Happy Monday, you guys. Again, live Q&A. If you have any questions, drop them in the chat. Otherwise, I'm going to jump in with a bunch of questions I got on Instagram from you guys. Okay, so we're just going to like jump in the nitty gritty stuff. Um, someone asked, how often should we dedicate, this is from Amber Janene, how often should we dedicate specific parts of our body to working out per week, for example, leg day? So generally you want to work on each muscle group two to three times per week for optimal results. Uh, a lot of people train legs more often, so three times per week because you just there's just more muscles in your legs and your upper body, so you have to hit it a little bit more often, a little bit higher uh, volume and frequency, and then you can do arms or upper body twice a day. Or of course, you can also do this all wrapped into total body workouts, which is what I recommend for petite women because you get that metabolic effect of doing a total body workout over the split training. Um, this is a great question though. Um, okay. And I'm hoping the next 30 minutes is going to be super value packed. I'm just going to like run through a lot of, a lot of information. So again, if you do want to jump in, if you have questions about anything I bring up, please feel free to make use of me since I'm here live and can basically give you live, um, live feedback in time. Okay. In real time. That's a word. Uh, someone asked about PFF, which stands for protein, um, fats and fibrous carbs. That's what we teach in petite power, which is our 12 week nutrition and fitness transformation program for petite women. Um, this is how you build out a plate as a petite to help speed up your metabolism. So, um, MRSD asked are PFF portions on a plate of food supposed to be equal? Really good question. They're not supposed to. So in general, you want to have, you want to build your plate around protein. Um, make sure that your serving of protein is about 20 to 30 grams that could be three to four ounces of your protein of choice and your fats and your carbs are going to depend on how active you are for the day. Um, what your goals are, uh, in general, you can have as a, for a woman, um, for a petite woman, you can have about a thumb or two thumbs of fat. So that could be like avocado, olive oil, whatever. Um, and for your carbs, generally a cupped hand of carbs will do the trick. Again, it could be more depending on how, active you are that day and what your goals are. But that's a ballpark. In general, the protein is the most important one. So you always want to prioritize that. Um, thoughts on BMI for petite women often puts us in the overweight or obese category. Yeah, BMI has been on the outs for a long time. It's just not that accurate anymore, especially for athletes and for people like us that weight train. It's not going to take into account the fact that your muscle weighs more than fat. And so you could have a higher BMI, but be in incredible shape. So that's absolutely not the best thing to go off of BMI. Of course, if your body fat percentage is really high and you're, you have less lean mass in the form of muscle, then you can absolutely focus on BMI and look to improve that number if, with your doctor, if that's a goal for you. Um, RB, thank you so much. Thanks for showing up here today. Okay. What do you do on your rest days and how many active days a week is healthy? This is from Maria Andrea. What do I do on my rest day? So yesterday I took a rest day. I take right now I'm taking one rest day per week and it's kind of two actually, but on my rest days I do right now, this is just right now in my life, I'm taking active recovery days. So I foam roll, which helps break up the 
um, some of the soreness that I'll have from just like lifting heavy throughout the week. Um, I'll foam roll. I'll do any rehab exercises I need to. I have a um, old rotator cuff injury. I'm still like nursing back. So I'll do some like very easy exercises for that. Um, I do a dynamic warm up. So these are like active stretches and I do light cardio. So if it's a step count goal, for example, maybe I, on my active rest day, I want to make sure I get 10,000 steps in, I go on to walks, you know, or I do some cycling downstairs. Um, or yeah, I try not to have the intensity be high, but I still want my rest days to be active. I just don't want to sit at home all day on my rest days. I don't feel good the next day when I do that. So I still stay pretty active and I try to do things I love. Um, recently I've been loving cycling. Like I've just been loving it so much. So I'll go and do a cycling class, like super low intensity, low impact one in general how many active rest days that you take depends on you, your goals, and also what you're currently doing. So the reason why there's never one word answers to all of these questions is because it's largely dependent on where you are in your fitness journey. And that's why you will find a million answers on the internet because there's a million answers depending on where you're at. So for me, I've been exercising my whole life. I used to be an internationally ranked athlete and was Olympic hopeful at one point. So I have a lot of experience working out a lot, um, which is why I only take one to two rest days. Someone who's just getting started might take five rest days and work out twice a week. So you guys can see how variable it can be based on your goal. It really, there is no right thing. What you want to do if you're a beginner is just start with that, you know, one to three to five depends on, you know, days per week and gradually increase it to the point that feels good for you, that gets you results, but it's also very sustainable and maintainable for you so that you can keep it in the long run. You don't want to do anything that you can't actually maintain for like the rest of your life, basically. Um, hi, Karen. Karen, you asked, can you lose pounds of muscle if you haven't worked out in two weeks? No, luckily it's not that easy to lose it. Wouldn't worry about it. If you can get back to lifting soon, even just body weight with a uh, higher time under tension, use tempo, you will maintain your muscle. Um, it's much easier, harder than you think it, than you think to lose muscle. It'll take a while. And honestly, don't, you don't have anything to worry about there. You're fine. It would take a few months. Okay. Oh, I like this question from it's D little things. Uh, cute. Which food item keeps you full for the longest? So maybe not just one item, but, uh, the specific macronutrient. So there's three types of food groups. There's protein, there's fats, and there's, um, carbohydrates. So the one that has the most calories in it is fats meaning it's just the densest in terms of like how many calories are in it. So there's four calories per gram of um, protein and carb, and then there's nine in fat. So fats are usually the most filling thing to eat. So these would be like your nuts, nut butters, avocado. Also avocado has a high fiber intake. So that'll keep you extra full, which is great. Um, of course, they're also calorically dense, so you want to be mindful of that. But if you want to make sure you stay full for four hours between meals, get enough protein, get enough fibrous carbs, and then make sure you have healthy fats in there. Like I just said, that's going to keep you super full. The thing that keeps you the least amount of full is naked carbs. So this is just like, excuse me, um, car uh, snacking on like uh, a banana. It's just, it's a healthy food item, but when it's alone, it's going to make you hungry really fast because it's mostly sugars gets broken down really quickly in the body and it leaves you hungry really soon after. Um, hi, Anika. Anika asks, how can I increase my calories after I've been slightly under eating for a few months? You want to do it really slowly. So if you're going to reverse diet or just try to increase your metabolism, do it very slowly Make sure you're hitting a high enough protein goal. Um, I recommend 0.8 to 1 gram of protein per pound of body weight. So you can work up to that and just slowly increase. Don't increase by 500 calories suddenly, right? You want to do it very gradually so that your metabolism can, can increase slowly, catch up slowly, and that you don't start storing a lot of the excess as fat right away. So just do it, do it in a healthy way. Um, Emily said, my gym is still closed. If you could only own three pieces of a at home gym equipment that are easy to store, what would they be? Love that question, Emily. I would say also my gym is still closed too. I'm not going to the gym. I'm still doing rooftop workouts, living room workouts. You guys have seen on my Instagram. Um, I would say a pair of dumbbells is absolutely essential. 
uh, resistance bands, really, really great. And maybe a TRX system because body weight training, you can do a lot of challenging stuff with that. Those would be my top three, I think. Uh, Melanie said tips on losing fat without counting calories or macros. Absolutely. So it, again, it's going to depend where you're at. Some people are not eating enough calories. And they need to start increasing their calories to lose weight. And some people are eating in a, in a caloric surplus if you're a petite woman and you're eating over 2000 calories a day and your goal is to lose fat, you can start to um, listen to uh, your hunger cues and also start to modify your intake. You don't want to diet or restrict too much, but if you're eating that high of a surplus and you want to lose weight, you can start to eat, um, you know, prioritize the protein and eat smaller portions. If you are not eating enough, that can also be a reason why you're not losing calorie, uh, losing fat, and you've hit a plateau, you might need to start increasing slowly. So it's really hard to give advice on YouTube. And also this is like, people DM me all the time. And they're like, how do I lose fat? Um, and it's like, I don't know. I don't know you. I don't know what your metabolic history is. I don't know how many calories you're eating right now. Um, it would be so unprofessional, like to give you any advice without knowing the you and like the context of you and what your movements like. And just a lot of things that we always run our clients through to make sure the recommendations we make are like sound and actually will be effective for you. So, um, Melanie, the, the short answer would be start to get in tune with your hunger cues. Um, you do not have to track macros. You can go by the palm method. You can start to, um, improve the composition of your diet. So just making sure you're getting enough whole unprocessed foods, and that should be enough to get you started. Um, Sam, hi, Sam asked, is it okay to have a few days where you just aren't hungry or you don't meet your calories or macros for the day? I have trouble forcing myself to eat when I'm not hungry. So the thing is, um, when you are trying to increase your metabolism, you're not going to be hungry. You're going to have to teach your body to get hungry. So this is like a, a lot of people who eat like, you know, women who get stuck in those like chronic eating only 500 calories a day, they're training their body not to be hungry. They're slowing their metabolism down over time. So you have to eat a little bit more when you aren't hungry. For example, like if you want to eat breakfast again, you'll have to eat before you have that appetite to start getting those hunger hormones back, start getting everything working back up again. Um, so I would say if it's, if you're, if you're not able to eat your macros every day, they're probably too high. It should be something a little more realistic if you're not reading, reaching the goal. Um, but it's okay to eat when you're not hungry. If you are coming out of restriction for a long time and your body has forgotten like what normal hunger cues are, you're gonna have to retrain it and relearn it and get those hunger hormones, your leptin and ghrelin like back in gear. So it's okay. In that case, you, you know, eat more when you're not feeling it. Uh, again, really depends on the individual and like where you're at. Um, if you guys are learning anything, also, I'd love if you'd give this video a thumbs up um, and support this channel. It means so, so, so much to me. Um, okay, Cindy asked, I've been doing a four-day split upper body and lower body with up to 30-pound dumbbells at home for the past five weeks. See, these are the, <laughs> no offense, Cindy, these are the DMs I get, like, every day. And I don't blame you guys. They're good questions. Um, so you've been eating 1,400 to 1,700 calories a day. 128 pounds, not seeing much of a change. So even though you gave me a lot of information, I also still have so many questions for you. And if you'll know that good professionals have lots of questions, um, because I just, I literally, I would need to get up in your business and see like, what, what is your food journal look like? Are you eating enough? I'll ask you questions and maybe you can investigate into your, your life. Um, what is your composition of your diet look like? So Yes, you're eating 14 to 1700 calories a day, but what is it? What is the composition of that nutrition? Is it mostly processed? Is it whole foods? Is there enough protein in every meal? Um, looking at the composition of your diet is so important for changing your body composition overall. You really, the calories, like they're important, right? I'm not going to say they don't matter. Of course they do matter, but the composition and the quality of your nutrition is just as important in getting through a plateau. Um, so I would say, get curious, like track, like check out what your movement is like, what your step count is like, um, how intense are your workouts? Uh, have you chronically been dieting prior to now? Um, there's just so many things that could be at play. That's why it really, really have to, you really have to take a close look at all the factors. Like what's your sleep like? Like there's so many things. So I hope you understand that to give you a good answer, I would need a lot more information. 
Um, how do you accurately count calories of cook your own meals? You can just download uh, my fitness pal or the my macros plus app. And you can just every single food has um, a certain number of calories. in it. It's so like a potato. If you're like cooking your own meals, you just enter, um, you weigh it out on a scale. So you get a food scale, you weigh it out in grams, and it'll just tally it up for you. Um, hi, Chelsea, Chelsea asked to optimize fat burn, should I limit grains like bread and pasta and tortillas? Um, no, not necessarily. Uh, again, Chelsea, if it fits your into your like, um, meal goals for your macros, you're not going to slow fat burn by having traditional carby carb foods like that. You need those in fact for fat burning. So you don't need to swear off any food groups. There's a place for every food and every diet. So long as you don't have a food intolerance allergy or yeah, some, you know, that's where you, that's the only reason to limit a food is an intolerance. Um, so yeah, no, you don't have to swear off all of the good carbs. I certainly do not do that. Um, Crystal asked, how do you know you are gaining muscle and not fat? How do you measure that kind of progress? Great question, Crystal. So measuring progress, the scale is not necessarily going to tell you if you're losing fat or muscle, right? Because it's not looking at your body composition. It's just looking at your overall weight. And so you could be gaining muscle and gaining pounds on the scale and still not, you know, not be sure if you're also losing fat at the same time. So what I recommend, Crystal, take measurements with a measuring tape. That is going to be a really in good indicator of, especially in your natural waistline, that's the thinnest point of the waist. Measure that, measure your hips, measure your upper thigh. Those are the things that you'll want to take a look at to help engaging your body recomposition progress. Yeah, no problem, Sam. Let's see. You guys have great questions today. Um, Kiana said, what age do you think it's appropriate to start working out? That's a good question. Um, it depends on what workouts you're doing. Uh, of course at any age, it's great to be active. So, um, if you are talking about like heavy, heavy weightlifting, obviously you need to be supervised if you're really young. Um, but you know, when people also weightlift to just, uh, make sure you're doing it in a safe environment and with a good coach. Um, I've been following small Dicks workouts and Tasha ocean functional workouts. Awesome. Is there anything I should be wary of being only 16? No, I think those are great workouts. Very functional. Um, that's awesome. Good for you, Kiana. That's awesome. Uh, let's see. Itty asks, what are your favorite vegetarian slash vegan protein powders? I'm not vegan or vegetarian. However, I eat a lot of plant-based meals cause it's great. Um, high fiber. I love Tropica right now. You guys, uh, it's an Australian brand Tropica, vanilla protein. They also have a salted caramel. That's like so delicious. And they have a chocolate one. I've been, that's what I've been eating for my protein powders. And I'm, I'm, I think I'm in it for like the long haul with them. They make a really good protein powder. Um, oh, you just ordered it. Yeah. That's what I recommend. Um, how do you know, this is from Jovita. How do you know whether your hunger is emotional or real? Ooh, that's a very good question. So if we're going to talk about, um, like this, this is really going to come down to like hard work on your part. Um, and I, it's really great that you're asking these questions. I think is step one is just having this awareness or this curiosity of like, what's going on with my body? Why am I behaving this way? Um, I would keep a food journal and if you're finding that you are eating out of boredom or if you're eating right after a, some kind of emotional trigger or interaction with a specific person or you notice your stress is correlated with eating that could be emotional, um, you really just going to have to get very in tune with yourself. Journaling is a really good tool for this. So you just journal before every meal, talk about how you're feeling, what, you know, look at the context of your day, like what, what is causing you stress that day. Um, or emotional stress and start to keep a food log of when you eat in, you know, in relation to how you're feeling and you might start to notice some patterns um, aware. It's really a exercise in awareness, which lifestyle changes are all about awareness. At the end of the day, it's, we're all making these tough changes in our life based off of um, our own behaviors and accepting hundred percent responsibility for like, Oh man, I, 
I didn't even know I was doing that, but I am. And I, I want to change it. I want to feel better. I want to have more energy or I want to have a better relationship with food. It all starts with that awareness. So thanks for that question. That was a really great question. Um, Melanie asked, what mindset shift really made you see results? Manifestation. Um, I mean, I've had so many mindset shifts over the course of my life. Uh, I would say most recently in the last, you guys know, I tracked my fitness I shared my fitness journey and lost 10 pounds over the last uh, like six months or so. Um, I think I just had this, uh, I love fitness. You guys know that I just had this Uber curiosity to, I, I just knew like I was working a lot and I wasn't, I was doing the bare minimum. And I got to a point where I was like, I really want to see like just what I can do because I know that I'm just doing what I do to take care of myself, but I'm not like pushing the boundaries. Um, and so I was just kind of motivated to, um, just to be like, what could be possible? You know, what, what could happen? Like I'm having so much fun and I really focused on the process, um, the day in and day out process. I didn't focus on the results. I had no goal to lose 10 pounds. I was, didn't even know I had 10 pounds to lose. Um, I felt good before I went into it. It was really just like, let's like have some fun and, um, use my body and get stronger and kind of came from that like curiosity. Anastasia asked, do you believe in bulking and cutting as far as body recomp goes? So a bulking and cutting is not body recomp. So when you have a, when you undergo a body recomposition, you're not dieting and bulking, eating in a surplus and dieting. You're not doing that. That's it's the other opposite. So I teach and I advocate for body recomp. It's when you eat at your maintenance calories, if you're in a good place with your maintenance calories as a petite, um, and you work on weight training and some other lifestyle changes, eating PFF, and it's slower. It takes three to six months, but you slowly change the composition, the appearance of your body. The scale may or may not change during that time, but you're changing that fat to muscle ratio. So less spot, lower body fat percentage, higher lean muscle tissue in your body. This is so much more sustainable than bulking and cutting. I cannot tell you guys how many times I've watched women First of all, dieting, you guys know how I feel about dieting. It has a 99% fail rate, 100% of the time. Is that like a, can I say that? I don't know. I know it's 99% fail rate. They do not work in the long term. Um, also, your metabolism will adapt to a lower intake and you'll hit a plateau. So there's really no reason to diet unless you're in a very caloric surplus starting out, like I said, above 2000 calories a day. As a petite woman who doesn't exercise a lot, that would be like a very high surplus. Then you could do a cut and do it safely and maintain it. But if you're a regular person, you know, uh, you don't need to do cuts and it's not going to help you. Bulking is not great unless you're competing and you really need to put on muscle um, a lot of times, or you really, if you have a really strong goal to gain weight that you should bulk. But if you're just trying to undergo a body recomp, so lose fat and gain muscle, you can do that without dieting or bulking and just stay the course, strength train, work on the intensity, work on building muscle, improving your metabolism, improve your nutrition, and you will get results in three to six months, if not sooner, it depends on the in individual. And then you'll get to keep them forever because it's very sustainable, it's uh, maintainable, and you're not restricting, which is really important. Um, Miss Young said, I've become vegan due to ethical reasons. Any tips to not get, uh, quote unquote, fat? I feel like my body fat percentage increased even when trying to increase vegan protein. Yeah. So unfortunately, a lot of vegan products on the market, you guys probably know, are heavily processed and not the healthiest, even though it, veganism is touted to be very healthy, right? Um, Plant-based diets, they are healthy. Um, if you're doing it responsibly, you're eating enough whole foods, you're getting enough um, protein. The problem we run into is people don't do that when they are, instead they just switch to like all the processed vegan products that are in the grocery store instead of like the whole single ingredient food, like your vegetables, fruits, um, beans, legumes, that type of thing. So I would try to stick to as many unprocessed vegan foods as you can. That would just be real food. And, um, you know, stick to, you can still get your protein. I made a whole other video on vegan and vegetarian protein sources. So check that out. Um, there's lots at edamame. There's so many. Um, I think it just came more to whole foods really go a long way. Um, we have a, probably going to hang around for like 10 more minutes. Um, if, uh, yeah, so we'll, we'll keep going. I don't know what I'm trying to say there. <laughs> 
Um, can you do a follow along warm up routine for weight training? Yeah, Melanie, check out my like ancient videos. Um, if you go into like the files of my YouTube channel, there is an old, old dynamic warm up. I still do that same warm up. It's a fantastic warm up. Check it out. It's called dynamic warm up. Um, thanks, Jovita. And thank you, Caitlin. Uh, let's see. Chelsea said, knowing that I can sustain better with a four workout day per week rather than five, should I implement this, keeping good habits and steps up on the rest days? Um, yeah, I mean, absolutely. You should do what is going to feel realistic for you. Um, keep in mind, this could affect, like, I know Chelsea, for you guys who don't know, Chelsea is in Petite Power. So she just actually finished around. She had great, great results. Um, I think doing what you can maintain is really important. Um, just make sure, yeah, make sure on your rest days, you stay at maybe a little bit slightly higher step count and you should be fine. At the end of the day, this is about enjoying a process. Like I said, you know, um, finding something maintainable, sustainable that feels good because then you'll stick to it. And that's when you really start to see like the magic of a program working. Um, Crystal asked, should overweight slash obese, obese, uh, petite still follow the one gram of per pound of body weight of protein? Um, no. And this is something I'm glad you asked. You should not. If I, I personally would say anything over 135 pounds for a petite woman, you don't need 135 grams of protein per day. It's just a little bit of an overload, um, to your kidneys. Not that you're going to like die or anything, but, um, no, I would cap it at 135 if you're uh, more than 135 and then fill out the rest of your calories with your fats and your carbs. Um, Sienna asked, do you take any other supplements or powders other than protein, amino acids, magnesium? So I'll tell you guys what I personally take, but I do need to disclaimer this and say that um, you can figure out exactly what you need to be taking as supplements just from a simple blood test at your doctor's. Um, check for any deficiencies in vitamins and minerals. They will straight up tell you. I will tell you that most women today are deficient in vitamin D3. We don't get enough sun. So I do take vitamin D3. I also take fish oil on days I don't eat salmon. That's important to get your, um, your, your fatty acids. Um, and what else? I sometimes take collagen. I, I like it, but I don't take it consistently. Um, that helps with my, I have a torn labrum in my hip from fencing just helps make things feel less, you know, more lubricated and not like, like I'm an old lady. Um, and what else I take? Um, I take a very high quality probiotic for gut health. There's tons of studies that your gut is like your second brain, the better, um, gut health you have, the higher immunity you have, especially when COVID hit, I went and started really making sure my, my gut health was on key. Um, so I would recommend the probiotic and a uh, high quality one. And um, I also take just a multivitamin. So that's what I like to do. But ask your doctors, get a blood test, see what you're deficient in. You don't need to be spending money on supplements. You're just going to pee them out unless you really need supplementation generally. Oh, thirsty, you guys. Okay. Let's take a few more. Thanks you guys for showing up. This is so fun. I'm so glad that so many of us can make it. Um, how often should you recalculate your macros? You can recalculate them every two to four weeks, depending upon your progress. So you, you don't want to change anything if it's not broken, right? If you have, if you're seeing progress, seeing progress is like two months, just don't change anything. Like just keep going, right? Um, if you have hit a plateau, you probably need to recalculate if it's been basically that's the only reason if you start to slow in progress, either your, your nutrition needs to change or another lifestyle thing needs to change, whether that's your step count, your intensity of your workouts, your sleep schedule, there's other things, your, your food journal. Um, you have to look at the whole picture as a puzzle. And that's honestly why working with a coach is really useful because they can help you look at more than just your caloric intake and figure out like, what should we shift? Because your caloric intake should be pretty much the last thing to change. There's so many other things that you can fine tune before you have to result, uh, resort to that. Um, let's see. Thanks, Crystal. If you, if I don't, this is from L, if I don't care for abs and just want to build muscles, can I not decrease my carb intake and simply increase protein intake? Um, 
I'm just trying to think of what you're trying to ask. If I don't care for abs and I, I so you just want to build muscle, you want to bulk, um, not decrease my carbs and in intake. Yeah. You, you'll want carbs for sure. I would increase carbs for sure. And in, I would increase both, just do them both. Um, Sydney asked what pro probiotic do you take? I take now foods probiotic. Um, I've been on it for like six months and I can say it is great. You can check them out. They have good quality stuff. Um, I'm not an affiliated with them. Uh, Melanie, this would be the last one. Is it bad to use a laxative when your doctor, doctor recommends it? Because I normally don't have good digestion. I will leave that one to your doctor. I would not recommend taking a laxative unless your doctor has specifically prescribed it for whatever health reasons that you might have. Um, and actually this will be the last one from Caitlin. Uh, is 1400 calories generally too low for a petite, like five, three, um, that's on the lower end. It's not the lowest. Trust me. You're doing good. Caitlin, some petite women, and I've been there myself, so it's, I'm not judging. This has been my life journey too. are, you know, below a thousand and that's not good. 1400 still, you know, you might not be happy there. You might want to eat more food in a day. Um, so it kind of depends on what your goals are, but it could be better, but it could be a lot worse. Um, all right, you guys, thank you so much for coming to the live Q and A. That was really fun. Um, cheers to the short girl gang. Give this a like if you learned something new and you just enjoyed hanging out with me and I'll upload this on my channel if you want to review and, uh, yeah, I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Happy Monday and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.